Nicola, we have a, a few questions for you. And uh, at the end, our Prime Minister will have uh, the time for his speech. Madam Cousin, you often talk about the link between food and security and uh, the fact that anger drives conflict and conflict drives anger. Based on your experience, what are the most effective actions to achieve peace and food security? Well, thank you very much for this opportunity to be here tonight. Let me tell you how good you all look here tonight. Let me hear your voices for Bono being here to help us create public will. When we talk about peace and ending hunger, at the base of peace is food security. The ability for people to feed their families, the ability for a child to go to school with a full stomach, the ability for a mother to know that she can provide the nutrition that will ensure that her child can live life to its fullest mentally and physically. And without that, without those abilities, we cannot have peace. Gandhi said to a hungry person, a piece of bread is the face of God. So if you do not have that piece of bread, whoever provides it is your God. And so when we have so many, over 795 million people who are food insecure today, we know that without that piece of bread, we cannot have peace. And so we know we can end hunger. It requires the public will. It requires your voices, which is why I am so pleased that Bono has agreed to participate with us here tonight because you are all here as a result. And when we have your voices providing the public will, will ensure that we provide the base that is necessary, ending hunger, and then we can achieve peace. Thank you, Madam Cousin. A second, a second question for you, because Syria is currently the biggest World Food Program emergency operation, assisting both inside in the country and beyond its borders. You have recently been in Yemen, where World Food is also carrying out another challenging operation. How are people coping in such a dramatic situation? They're not. You're seeing people make the moves that are required when they have no hope. They're coming to the shores of Europe. Their children are no longer in school. Let me tell you a story. I was in Lebanon sitting with a mother and her six children. Her oldest was 10 years old. He no longer attended school because he didn't have enough, there was not enough food in the house because WFP was forced to cut their benefit in hats to $13 per person per month. You can't buy, buy a lot of food with that. So he went to work at 10 years old. I asked him what he dreamed about. He said when he was in Syria, he dreamed about being a pilot. He dreamed about playing with his friends. Now he dreamed about carrying the, the, the flour in the mill to make bread, or he didn't dream. And when you cannot dream, when you have no hope, you take the desperate measure. You do whatever is required in order to ensure that you can feed your family. We're seeing girls marry earlier. We're seeing boys going back into Syria to join the fight because then they can make money to try and feed their families. And we're seeing people getting in boats to come where they think there is opportunity. Without food, there is no hope. Thank you, Madam Cousin. Sappiamo quanto è un piacere per tutti noi avere questa sera con noi Mr. Bono. Mr. Bono, we want to start with uh, these uh, words your words. We like to get stuff done. They are the sign of a concrete daily engagement aimed at solving problems. The world suffering from hunger and poverty is watching us, is listening to us. Can this challenge be overcome? Good evening.
Ciao belle gente. These are big questions. Can we fix the problem of hunger in the world? Can we fix the problem of poverty in the world? Can we fix the problem of conflict in the world? Well, on the first two out of those three, I can speak with confidence when I say yes, absolutely. There is already enough food in this world to feed the world. It is not the lack of food, but the lack of will to distribute the food that is the problem. I'm very moved, as a lot of you are, by the work of the World Food Program. But like Minister Coveney was saying, it is extraordinary that every year they have to wait on funding, on a case-by-case -case basis, for them to be able to do their job. It is extraordinary to me that in the middle of a refugee crisis, when the World Food Program are doing incredible work in Jordan, that they are cutting the program in Jordan because they can't find funds. That is politically unacceptable to everybody under this sky this evening. And we say, we'll not let that continue on. And we want to see a change in that. And I know the Prime Minister feels the same. So this is not good enough. And the Italian people or the Irish people will not have it. So. Um, as regards conflict, there is a relationship here. And if you look across, for example, the North Africa, and you see this geological phenomenon they call the Sahel, right across North Africa, you see the combination of extreme climate extreme poverty and extreme ideology these three extremes are creating a lot of problems and if you see on a map where all the problems have been from El Shabaab in Somalia right the way through to Boko Haram in Nigeria all the way along you see these three extremes I would suggest it's a political imperative for Europe now to deploy expertise and resources to prevent some of the fires because it's cheaper to prevent fires than to put them out later. And it's now a, it now has to be a political priority of us to deal with what's happening on the continent of Africa. And I think if we do that, we have a better chance at dealing with extreme poverty and extreme uh, hunger. They are all interrelated, is the answer to your question. Mr. Bono, yesterday in Turin, you said, Ang Anger is about feeling abandoned, just not about politics. The injustice in the world is an expression of an injustice which occurred to you as an individual for winning the fight against the hunger. Anger could be useful. Are we enough angry? You feel angry. I'm very, very, very angry about the waste of this woman's talent. This is an extraordinary woman. She's an actual hero. I'm just a rock star. She's an actual hero. And I get angry when I see her have to take a begging bowl and go to the 150 countries that are represented in the expo and she has to ask them can she has some money so that she feeds the people who are depending on her. That makes me angry and I can use my anger to quote my old idol Johnny Rotten. Anger is an energy. Anger is an energy. If you use it positively it can be a great thing. I'm going to try and use it positively. The last question, Mr. Bono. Europe is going through rogue times. There are hundreds of thousands of people escaping war and poverty. 
and pouring into our countries. You said yesterday, we have no answer. There is just a thing we are aware of. They are not migrants. They are people escaping from war and death. They are refugees. We'll be able to provide them all with the assistance they need. Right. Well, it's important to understand we should not use the word migrant. Migrant is a political world, word that is used to take away the real status of these people. They are refugees. They are running from war. And they actually liked their homes. And they're not leaving their homes because they want to live in Italy or they want to live in Ireland. They're leaving their homes because they don't have any homes. And <clears throat> so we won't use the word migrant anymore. I have been a migrant. Lots of Irish people have been migrants, haven't they, Simon? And we're rather good at being migrants. But it's, it's a different thing. And I want to applaud some leadership that happened. Because when Prime Minister Renzi stepped out and said this is the moral obligation of Europe and of Italy, lots of people in this country went, what's he talking about? This is not, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Now, after Angela Merkel has followed suit and shown incredible leadership from Germany, now the Prime Minister Renzi looks like he was the same person in an insane um, um, climate that he faced in the media here. So I want to thank you, sir, for your leadership on the refugee crisis. Beh. Mr. Bono l'ho appena citato. Io credo che noi possiamo ora ascoltare le parole del primo ministro italiano Matteo Renzi, che può scegliere se preferisce da qua o dal podio. Un minuto solo per dire una cosa. Uh, credo che noi italiani dobbiamo guardarci in faccia. 15 anni fa Bono Vox viene in Italia, c'è il grande giubileo del 2000, ve lo ricordate? Io facevo parte di un'organizzazione di volontariato, Bono viene in Italia e dice dai rimettete il debito, c'era il grande giubileo. Dopo fu un momento molto bello, molto emotivo, io me lo ricordo bene, lo dicevo prima a Bono, in 15 anni però dopo noi non abbiamo fatto la nostra parte. L'Italia ha peggiorato la propria posizione nella classifica dei fondi per la cooperazione internazionale e abbiamo dimenticato di dare importanza all'Africa e alla grande sfida culturale, economica, civile e valoriale dell'Africa. Allora, primo impegno, come italiani, lasciate stare le idee politiche di ciascuno di noi, dobbiamo tornare a fare l'Italia, cioè dobbiamo mettere più soldi nella cooperazione internazionale Dobbiamo investire di più perché questi non sono dei valori astratti, questi sono i valori che hanno fatto grande l'Italia. E allora l'impegno che prendiamo da qui al 2017 è tornare ad essere al quarto posto nella classifica dei paesi del G7 per cooperazione internazionale. No excuse, no scuse, ritorniamo al nostro posto. Questo è il primo tema. Secondo tema e ho finito, così lasciamo velocemente, anche perché è giusto ascoltare. Io credo una cosa che sia fondamentale. Oggi noi siamo in un momento di snodo della vita europea. Lo ha detto Maurizio, lo ha detto Simon, lo ha detto Bono. Lo pensiamo tutti noi europei, che guardiamo alle organizzazioni internazionali, ma guardiamo anche a casa nostra. Non basta commuoversi. Non basta commuoversi quando vediamo quelle immagini di quel bambino che potrebbe essere nostro figlio. È giusto commuoversi, ma poi è arrivato il momento di mettersi in movimento. E allora guardiamoci negli occhi come italiani. Questi temi, la lotta contro la povertà, la lotta contro la fame, l'obiettivo zero fame nel mondo, non sono obiettivi astratti, lontani sono il motivo stesso per cui noi facciamo politica poi ci sono da fare le riforme da riorganizzare le politiche da cambiare i paesi, giusto ma il motivo per cui uno fa politica è per essere capace di guardarsi allo specchio e pensare che sta lavorando per i propri figli con degli ideali e con dei valori questo signore andò al congresso dell'Ebur Party e disse una frase per me bellissima scherzando io ho detto che dovrei pagargli il copyright 
perché l'ho utilizzata per tutta la mia esperienza politica. Lui disse a Tony Blair e a Gordon Brown, voi siete i depositari dei sogni della gente. Allora io vorrei che noi prendessimo un impegno col World Food Program, ma più in generale con ciascuno di noi. Nei prossimi due anni l'Italia dovrà fare tante cose, far tornare a crescere il PIL, far ripartire l'economia, affrontare le questioni delle riforme, ok, ma dobbiamo anche tornare ad essere gli italiani, quelli che sono fieri quando un bambino viene fatto partorire su una nave della Marina Militare, quelli che sono orgogliosi del terzo settore e del lavoro del volontariato e quelli che credono che l'Africa non sia un problema ma la grande sfida per i prossimi anni. Lo faremo insieme, grazie a tutti voi e grazie a Expo, anche questo sarà l'eredità di Expo. Grazie Presidente Renzi, molte grazie a Madame Alessia Ricurbin e soprattutto grazie a Bono.